Hey everyone, so we're back in Arizona. We have a lot of things to do this summer. Our oldest son is graduating and going to attend college at Arizona State University. And we've got doctor's appointments. Uh, Dominic's got to have his wisdom teeth removed. We've just got a ton of things to do this summer. And so we will be spending a lot of the summer here in the valley. Um, and that means it's going to be pretty warm. Now, we have plenty of air conditioning in the bus um, up until about 105 degrees. The problem is it's approaching 105 degrees now and it's only gonna get hotter. And so we are looking to solve the problem of bringing more cooling into the bus. Now, ideally, we'd put another mini split in. Uh, those things are awesome. They're very efficient. They hardly use any power. They're extremely quiet, which is one thing we love and they do a great job of cooling. Unfortunately for us with the mini split in the front and then we do have a 5000 BTU air conditioner in the rear of the bus, those do awesome and they keep those spaces extremely warm but in the center of the bus, uh, it tends to get very warm. There are quite a few windows in the center of the bus um, and that's where we cook. We have the ice maker running, uh, the refrigerator's there, and so there are things that generate heat in the center of the bus, and that's a fairly constant thing. And so we're hoping to put in an air con another air conditioner, probably just temporarily. We're not 100% sure. I say that because I'm still formulating the plan in my mind. So right now, my plan is to put another air conditioner just right smack dab in the middle of the bus. So ideally, like I said, we'd love to have a mini split because they're so efficient. Um, in fact, here where we stay, we only have a 30 amp plug and on that 30 amp plug, we can easily run the three air conditioners that we have on board because we have the mini split plus two fairly high efficiency window units so the, the, the big air conditioner draws about 800 watts, the small ones draw about 400 each, and the bottom one doesn't really draw a lot because it cools the space so quickly that it doesn't cycle on very often. So it doesn't use a ton of power. So we're well within the range, but we don't want to put a highly inefficient system in like those portable air conditioners, which we've had before, and there's a couple problems. One is they're horribly inefficient. So even an 8,000 BTU air conditioner is just not very efficient and they, um, they're just in the way. We have a very small space. There's six of us already. So we would love not to use any of the floor space or have to run that. There's an exhaust pipe usually that you have to run out of the coach and get to get the hot air out. So, I was doing a ton of research and um, they do actually make a mini split that's sort of a window unit. So it took me a little bit of researching to find and there is this, there a U-shaped um, mini split unit and it does have a variable uh, compressor as well as a variable fan and they're supposed to be extremely quiet just like a mini split and extremely efficient. So um, the one I think I want is a one ton unit. So it's, it's 12,000 BTUs. So that should be more than enough. And it only really draws eight to 800 to 1,000 amps, I believe. So that should still have us in our window where, we, you know, as long as it's not on all the time, where we would be comfortable with the power of that unit. So anyway, I did a bunch of research. Medea is the one who makes the U-shaped ones. And so I started looking at those and unfortunately the price is about $500. So four to $500 uh, for the unit. So I started then looking around and I thought, oh man, if I can't do that, then, you know, maybe just a high efficiency window unit, just enough to, to put some cold air in the center. And I started looking on Craigslist, so we've only been here a few days, and so I haven't had a whole lot of time, but I did find one. I found one of those Medea units, and the guy only wanted $150 for it. So, you know there's gonna be problems. All right, so I went to go check out this $150 Medea unit, and I knew there was gonna be problems. Well, first of all, $150 for a $500 air conditioner, and the second thing is the ad very clearly said, it works well, 
it blows cold air, but it's noisy. And for that big of a price difference, I was expecting quite a bit of noise. So I was not disappointed. It is noisy. <laughs> so I got there, we powered it on, he showed me it was working, and it was blowing cold air. So it was, in that regard, it was nice, it was working, but it is loud. So I'll show you exactly what that means. So we'll go ahead and power it on. And we did power it on when I bought it, so I know that it works and that everything's functional. And it'll come on, and you'll hear as soon as this fan in the front starts to go, it is very noisy. So that's the noise he's talking about. And I think he, he had another one of these hanging on his on his wall, so I think he just warrantied this one or something. They didn't want it back. I don't know what the deal was, but it is extremely noisy. And this fan, um, this is just gross. So we are gonna clean all of this out, take it all apart. And I did have time to watch a guy on YouTube we took one of these apart and redid the bearing on the other side of the motor and it quieted it all back down back to how it was from the factory. These are known to be exceptionally quiet, like like quieter than a library typically is quiet. So I'm hoping we can get it back to that because if not, there's no way Michelle's letting this thing in the house. So um, if I do turn off the uh, the compressor portion of it, I can do by setting the mode, the fan, we can hear that it's just as noisy. So we can't even really hear the compressor because the front part is so noisy. So we're gonna take it all apart, uh, clean it all up, and see if we can't rework those bearings to get them back in a state where this thing is actually quiet again. Alright, so the unit did come with the remote, the manuals, all the stuff to put it together, the window frame unit, which is what makes me think it was a warranty, that he got a new one and warrantied the other one. So I'm going to go ahead and unplug this and start pulling it apart, see what we can find. This is the type of tabs it has, and it is a little tricky to get this off. So I had to go through with a small screwdriver, kind of try to find these little tabs and then push down on them. But you can't push down too much or you'll break these. All right, ran out of sunshine yesterday and today's been a busy day, but we're back at this thing. And when we pull this off, we can see that there are quite a few wires in here. So we're gonna have to disconnect those to get this front face off so that we can clean it and then clean this coil and this front part. All right, I managed to get it out. There's quite a few bolts holding that in. And this is just unlike any, there's no real bearing on it. Um, it's just kind of this thing that slides over here. So I'm going to have to look that up, but, but you would think there'd be like some scuff marks in here where it was rubbing or where something had gone wrong, but I don't see any kind of scuffing or anything like that, so I don't know. I don't, just don't think that's, I don't know. This has to be what it is because it's the only thing that moves in here, but... Anyway, I'm gonna turn to a little bit more and see, but that's the motor out of it there. All right, while we've got it apart like this, I'm gonna take the opportunity to just 
spray in here with some coil cleaner and get it to kind of come out of this front area because it, oh man, it's, it's terrible. In fact, I think I'm going to blast it first with some compressed air to try to force all the stuff through. So I'm going to go get my compressor. Alright, let's blast some of this stuff. Some coil cleaner. I usually get this on Amazon, but I think I actually picked this up at a Home Depot or something. It's just coil cleaner. Foams up. Okay. Let that work for a little bit and kind of spray it out. All right, I let this sit for a while. Now I'm just gonna hose it down a little bit. I did go in and look up these bearings. So this is the bearing for the Medea, and it's a little loose. It's not terrible, but I'm gonna re-grease this, and I'm gonna put a spacer. Um, that's what I saw the guy on on the internet do, and. Um, that seemed to work for him, so I'm going to try it. I'm going to try to put a spacer in there and a little O-ring, and I'm going to try to grease this up just a little bit more and see if that doesn't see if that doesn't help it. All right, so I have just a little... This, all this is, is a quarter-inch grade 8 flat washer. So I'm going to try that, and... I have a series of O-rings here and just some general purpose grease from my grease gun is what I'm going to fill the little bearing with. Alright, so on this guy, I just put this tiny O-ring in and it's just going to work as a spacer and hopefully not make it too loud. Just to give you a close-up of the spacing, it's just a little bit off. All right, spacer's on. Let's see if it goes back together. Yeah, I put a spacer in that bearing. So I think it's that motor. So it's the motor, not the bearing? That Can we replace the motor? Mm -hmm. Yeah. For how much? A lot of cool air. All right, this has progressed further like everything always does. So I think this motor is just bad. You can hear it. I did try to throw a little grease in it just kind of as a last ditch effort. But, you can hear it. Like that. There's no squirrel cage or anything, so that's 100% what's wrong. So, anyway, I'll be looking that up. See if I can get another one of those. So we've got the motor out. I've been troubleshooting it. So I did read online that people are replacing the bearings in these with just some skateboard bearings from Amazon. So I bought some of those and we're going to be trying to do that. So 
the first thing is to try to get this cover off and I've already tried to do that and the ones online came off pretty cleanly but mine um, it was like glued on there so when I went to take this guy off and I had to pull this off obviously to slide it you can see how it was chipping real bad and it broke so I think it was glued onto the lid so maybe the motor I have is just not a serviceable one but I'm gonna try to replace the bearings and just see if I can you know see if it'll work but I do have a motor coming tomorrow so this is more of just an experiment just to see you know can you replace the, the bearings I think I bought these bearings for I want to say it was like six dollars maybe it was eight dollars it wasn't it was less than ten for sure but I'll put a link to those and they're just like I said roller skate bearings um, the size is 608 ZZ I believe and these are supposed to be ABEC 9s so then I got into a big thing on like what that means but it's basically um, the ABEC number ABEC is a bearing conglomerate or association and they rate bearings on the precision so ABEC 1 is the worst ABEC 9 is supposed to be the most precise with the the uh, the tightest tolerances so these are ABEC 9 bearings so supposedly the tightest tolerance so um, I'm gonna try to put these in here um, but I did break this case so I don't know if I have to re-glue it or something but this may just end up being a, a catastrophe and, and we may just end up doing it, just replacing the motor which I bought the motor for $40 like I said these were less than 10 so um, Either way, if I get it working, uh, we'll have the AC for less than 150 bucks. So anyway, let's see what we can do. Like I said, when I pulled mine off, it did break and you can see how there's pieces that were kind of glued up inside. Um, and some of it came off okay, but most of it kind of broke. So there is, this little guy here um, is just a spacer for the bearing. And then the bearing itself in this one is bad. So you can hear it. It sounds terrible. But you can see the size on it. It says NMB608Z Thailand. So I'm going to try to remove that and put another one back on. Um, I'll probably just use a small wrench or something, but I've got to figure out how to get this stuff off. So there's this, and then this is some kind of heat sink on this processor. So um, I'm not sure if I'm going to have to unsolder this or not, but we will see. Anyway, I'm going to try to unsolder these guys, see how this goes. It should be pretty easy, but sometimes these will give you trouble because it can be kind of tricky to unsolder because you got to kind of do all four of them at the same time, which is that's a huge pain. But maybe we can maybe we can do it if we slowly work it. All right, after working on it for an embarrassingly long time, we've got the piece off. You can see the little, there's the little pins that it connects to in this guy. Um, and those line up with these. So we're gonna have to clean these off so that there's a hole again, so that those can go through and we can get them soldered back in. So we'll go ahead and clean all those off. We'll actually, we're gonna have to pop these off, clean all of that in there, clean everything out as well as we possibly can and then we'll see if we can't get it back together I'm probably just gonna go ahead and go with the new motor at this point because this has kind of been a disaster but it's um it's gonna be fun to see if if we can get this all back together and if these bearings can make a big difference to knock this off I'm gonna try a pair of vice grips and just kind of punch it through like that don't know if this will work but we'll give it a try. That's going. Oh, that's bad. 
All right, so I've got the holes cleared. Let's see if we can get that guy back on there. All right, we can see those little things sticking up through there. So now we've got to just solder them back in. And this guy's where he needs to go. And we'll put the bearing in once we get everything set and see how it works. These do not seem to fit quite as tightly as the last ones, so I'm not 100% sure they're going to work, but... Okay, well, I wouldn't trust that even if it's gonna work. It doesn't seem like it's gonna work because it's gonna be too, it's already making too much noise. So I'm gonna go with that's not gonna work. So I'm glad I bought a motor. All right, I did try it just for fun and the motor did not spin at all, so. <laughs> This is going to be a big fail, so like I said, I've got a motor coming tomorrow, but I think it was just too damaged, and the bearings didn't exactly fit right, and I don't know if I soldered it together correctly. So all those things in combination, I think this motor is no good anymore, and we'll try again tomorrow with the motor that's made for it. All right, new motor came in and it's 13 watts like the last one, 1400 RPM like the last one, 0 0.06 amps like the last one. The only thing that's a tiny bit different is the VSP, which is zero to six, six, six point six volts on the old one. This one's zero to 6.5 volts. And I think that, oh, and VCC is 15 volts as opposed to 16 volts on the old one. So hopefully those are close enough. Um, the motor itself looks practically identical. It did come with the rubber pieces. Um, I saved my last ones just in case, but it doesn't look like I'm gonna need them. So let's get this thing together, see if it's quieter. Ah. Yes. <laughs> that 
works. And it is very, very quiet. Thankfully. now that we've got the front part working we're gonna go ahead and clean the back and just clean all this stuff just wipe everything down make sure the coils are all really clean um, just clean all this debris out and just wipe everything down make sure everything's working and tight and then we'll get ready to put it in. All right, so the AC is back together. It's all clean. We've cleaned it all out. And so this part of the equation is finished. So it's nice and quiet. It runs well. So it's ready to go. Now the next problem is where are we going to put it? Because we already finished the bus and we didn't take into account that we wanted another air conditioner. Well, that part comes with a little story. So when we first built the bus, we had a cat. When we first got the bus, we had a cat that we were gonna bring with us. She was a great cat. Unfortunately, she was 21 years old, which is quite old for a cat. And because it took us so long to build the bus, she actually passed away. And so we had already planned to have the space. So there is a small um, vent where the refrigerator used to go. And that was when our bus came with a propane and electric refrigerator. We have used for the past three years an electric refrigerator which doesn't need all that venting. Venting is good for even an electric refrigerator because there's heat that's generated off the coils, that's how it works. And so we did put in some fans. So I have some fans back there, but the vent itself is open and I'll show you that now. All right, so here we can see this little vent. And what we use this for is storage. So in here, there's a wall back there and we keep um, just quick detailer, degreaser, croil, some gloves, um, some other disposable gloves and fans. And you can see that that fan is not working. So I need to replace that one. But we have fans here and up in the top, we also have fans up there which vent the microwave and oven. And so what this little space was going to be when we first built the bus was a space where we could put our cat's litter box and then access it from outside. So if we had to clean it, we could just pick up the litter box, pull it out of here, and it would be less messy inside. We'd kind of contain the litter box mess to just this little area in here. Since the cat passed away, we, Put a wall in there and it is now on this side it's storage for outside things degreaser and the gloves and all that and on the inside it's storage like a um, appliance garage all right so back here is the other side of that little vent area and as i mentioned we basically use this as a garage for appliances more or less so there's water filters in there, there's coffee maker, pressure cooker, and an inductive stove top. And so what our plan is, is to take out this, this uh, wall and that should open up that entire area. All right, so now with the wall removed, we can see that's, that's where the wall was attached, these little things here. And we can see that it's just a great clean pass through all the way to the front. So I want to get a piece of insulation to seal the front from the back. And there you can see how we installed the microwave. There's bolts up there for that. So we're gonna have to find a way to secure this air conditioner as well. But for now, that's what it looks like. So I'm gonna get the AC, I'm gonna put it in there and see how it fits. I did measure like four or five times <laughs> before I actually went and bought it. So I'm almost 100% sure it'll fit. All right, here it is in place. It's quite heavy, so I'm a little out of breath, but <laughs> you can see there's plenty of room up top. There's plenty of room in the cabinet itself. It should be able to blow out fine. We haven't decided yet if we want to remove this door. 
but I think it's been a little less convenient, but we may just leave it in and just close it when we pass by, or I don't know. We'll see how much of an inconvenience it is, but it's screwed onto the lip there, so we can remove it if we have to. Um, yeah, it looks like it fits just fine. All right, from the back side, we can see how this fits. So I've actually, I'm gonna replace that one fan that's not spinning, and I'm going to, I need to actually remove those to plug it in, is what I figured out. So I'm gonna be doing that, and then this should exhaust right out of this vent. And so that may not be enough, because this may not be louvered enough. So I'm hoping I don't have to, but I may have to kind of like make a mechanism to hold this open. All right, I got that fan replaced. It's nice and quiet now. We, I've plugged in this underneath. And so now I'm going to scoot this back so that it's flush with the back here so that it, that it blows out this way. And these fans should actually push air into the side of the unit. So this is an exhaust system for behind the refrigerator and uh, through the tech cabinet. So we have a tech cabinet up there that houses uh, a couple computers, cell phone booster, uh, NVR, and a, just a bunch of other little things that are electronic and need cooling. So we have three of these here. We have three of them kind of up at the top of the of the cabinet pushing air down. And so that will hopefully just push air into the side of here and then it'll get pushed out by the fan that's that's here. All right, so this is what it looks like when it's in. And like I said, these fans are pushing air into the side of the vents there. So let me put this down. And so when it's closed, you can't really tell that there's an AC in there. All right, AC's in. Give it a go. Have it come on. Ah, that's nice and cool. It's a pretty warm day today, so this is going to help. Let's see what the power draw is. Alright, so we're running four air conditioners and this one just kicked on. Got 2,900 watts, which is quite a bit, but it's warm today, so um, we're not getting much solar because we're plugged into shore power, and it's not prioritizing it, but it doesn't look like it's going to overload our system. All right, so it's settled in now. Um, it's not blowing as hard, and about 2200 watts or so with all four ACs running. I think it's in the 90s today. It's not quite a hundred. So it's not working as hard as it normally would, but it certainly isn't overloading our system. All right, so we've put a piece of foam in there now. We'll show it from this side. And it ended up feeling, uh, fit pretty well, except for kind of up in the corner. There's a little tiny gap there, but not anything terrible. So that should keep most of the noise and keep the outside air outside and the inside air inside. So anyway, we also did take out these little guys. Those are for the window stuff. And so we took those out and just set them in there so we wouldn't lose them. But it looks like it is going to work just fine. So also keep in mind that this is temporary. We're only doing this for the hot summer while in, we're in Arizona. We'll probably take this back out as soon as we go anywhere cooler. So <laughs> anyway, I'll show it from the back side too. All right, so this is what it looks like from the back. Not actually much to see. It actually looks much more sealed from the back. So um, it does go all the way down and in between the unit. So it should do a good job of sealing it and keeping the noise out here. So anyway, We'll call that project complete.